Bee Gees singer-songwriter Robin Gibb is dead at age 62. He leaves behind a legacy far richer than just disco. I'm Wendy Bounds, and welcome to WSJ Lunch Break. We have our own rock and pop critic here for the Wall Street Journal, Jim Fusilli, to tell us a little bit about Robin and the legacy that he and his brothers left behind, far richer than disco. Yeah, you would find people in the UK who listened to the band in the early 60s who would tell you they were comparable to the Beatles. Uh, they had big hits um, that Robin sang, and they weren't disco tunes. They were romantic ballads. Uh, he was a vulnerable singer. Uh, he laid himself out there, and uh, he had a very sweet sound. He was a tenor. Yeah, and he, he, but he could sing high, he could right. sing low. The three-part harmonies were really gorgeous. Now, in terms of this band's legacy and what they leave behind, how would you describe that sort of in the entire uh, pop and rock world? Where would you put them? Yeah, they're, go they're going to be known for Saturday Night Fever. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just too huge of an album. Which is one, it was the biggest selling album of all time, I think, until Whitney Houston's The, the Bodyguard. Is for that right? For a long time yeah. it was, yeah. And, and, you know, it's a great album. Um, the problem for Robin is that by that point Barry was singing the lead, and Barry's a very handsome, tall, dramatic looking fellow, and Robin sort of got shunted to the side. What you hope for in the long run is that people who love Saturday Night Fever will look at the body of work and rediscover what Robin did for the band in its early days. And Robin had, uh, had also tried to have his own career early on, I think in the late 60s, and then he came back to, to his brothers, and that's when the Bee Gees really started to take off, and of course they hit their, their, their milestone with, with Saturday Night Fever. Right, and he did well as a solo mm -hmm. act. Not, not huge in terms of uh, what he achieved with the brothers, but um, in, in the States, not so well. But in the UK, his solo career was, was at least above average. Now, in terms of uh, his other brothers, what were they, were they sort of as defining a uh, part of the group as Robin was? Maurice tended to be, um, and Maurice is Robin's twin, right. tended to be, um, uh, as far as I can tell, never sang any lead on any of their big hits. Um, but again, three-part harmonies, every, every voice is essential. And they joked uh, that, that doing Saturday Night Fever, which of course, while made them known a household name in many ways, that it sort of it, it cut them out of having their own album, right? Because they did these songs, these songs all ended up on the Saturday Night Fever, Fever album, but they joked that they lost their own Bee Gees album because and, of it. And you know, a lot of people think Saturday Night Fever is a Bee Gees album, but it's not. Um, but you know, they, they maximized it and they, they discovered um, a sound that was distinct to them. They took the best of what they used to do and, and made something new of it. Now you described something interesting about him, Jim. You say he cupped his ear when he sang. Why did he do that? Well, you know, it's not always easy to center a tone when you're performing live. And they were, from the earliest age, professionals. And they were very careful about their three-part harmonies. A lot of times you'll see vocal groups perform live in a rock setting and it's not quite there, the harmonies. You know, they're off ever so slightly. But what Robin was doing was assuring that he could hear his own voice mm -hmm. and stay on his own line. And they were also known for their iconic look. I mean, at one point they had the, right, the feathered hair, and he had a very distinctive he had an overbite. Yes, he did. And it made him kind of, it, it fit in beautifully with this vulnerable image of an ordinary fellow who could pour his heart out and stand up there in the spotlight and sing. Um, and, you know, bands from that era, you can pretty much tell what year it is by their hairstyle. Right. And he always had a wild hairstyle, but I just thought he had a cool look. What about the Studio 54 days? They were a part of that, is that right? Yeah, but I don't. Th I, I think they stayed a, a part of that. You know, most of the people who were involved in the hardcore Studio 54 scene tended to come and go rather quickly. Um, you know, the songs were played there, but I, I have no recollection of seeing them partying up there. They probably went there once or twice for publicity's sake, but I don't remember any of the brothers, you know, partying all the time at Studio 54. And one of the other brothers has already passed away, is that right? Is yes. It Ma Maurice? Robin's twin. Robin's yes. twin did. All right, Robin Gibb dead yes. at age 62, and he died of colon cancer. And complications. Complications yes. of that.